before I came here today, I was speaking to an old friend and classmate of mine, classmate in Joseph's in 1973. So I told her, can you imagine I'm going to Joseph's today to speak at a TEDx? She replied, Sri, you never even featured in my wildest dreams. Good morning. There is no such thing as work-life balance. I am convinced that the term work-life balance is some sort of a joke being played on people's lives, on their perception of reality, on their emotions. All of us are stuck with an image of a pair of scales with a box marked work in one pan and a box marked life in the other pan. For decades, we have been running around trying to find a balance jostling our work, our families, our other areas of life, trading one off with the other. In fact, if you look at it historically, it was in the 1800s that Robert Evans, who was the father of British socialism, said, I mean, finding that the workmen were overburdened with work, brought in the, ad, started advocating the 888 rule, eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work, eight hours of life. In the late 1980s, the word work-life balance was coined. It came to India possibly, I think, in the late 1990s. I graduated from this college in 73, went on to do law, graduated in 76. Work-life balance hadn't been coined then. I never knew what it was. I still went on with my work. I had time for my parents, my siblings, I was not married. I had time for my friends. I did a little bit of community work. I had personal time. But over the last two and a half decades, I've been hearing people talk of work-life balance, work-life balance, work-life balance everywhere. Sometimes I wonder why. Anyhow, my life was at peace. I was content, I was happy, nobody had complaints against me, I had no complaints against anybody, so I never really did give a lot of thought to that term. What happened was in 1977, just one year out of law college, I met Mr. V. Sridevan. He was a busy litigating lawyer from Chennai. I met him, I told him, sir, I want to be a litigator. Then he told me, listen, you want to be a good litigator? 100 hours a week. But he said, make sure that work and family coexist harmoniously. He never spoke of work-life balance. He had a family, he had a wife, two children. When he spent time with them, went out for vacations with them, and remained committed to his work. I was quite inspired by what he told me, and so I came back and set myself a rigorous work ethic. I should start work at 9 in the morning, end it at 11 p.m. at night. I used to work on Sundays, five, six hours. The reason was for this, that the high court list for Monday came on Saturday evening at 7.30 and somebody had to read those papers to argue on Monday morning. So Sunday off was not an option for me. 1980, I got married. My wife was there. Now I had another person in my life. I had to spend time with her. I had to spend quality time with her. And I realized that with my existing routine of 9 to 11, is not going to work. I thought about it. She was doing law, so she had classes at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. She used to go away. Then I realized that early in the morning, she didn't need me around the place. So I removed three hours of work time from the evening and put it in the morning. I started work at 6 a.m. Lawyers in Bangalore, many of you may know, work from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. 
They said, you're mad. Six o'clock, which lawyer works? I said, I work. I started working at six o'clock. By seven, seven fifteen, I used to be finished. I could spend time with my wife. She would say, let's go to this friend's house, invite people over for dinner, take in a movie. There was no complaint from any quarter. Then the children came. I continued with the same style of functioning, six in the morning. I continued, and today, through different phases of life, I still start work at 5.30, 6 in the morning. Anyhow, as far as my wife is concerned, we are not that young. There's no going out for parties every day or going out, meeting friends, inviting people over. A little more sedate. Some years ago, a young lawyer asked me, sir, how do you manage to keep this work schedule, take rest, and find time for family? I don't know. At that time, I remembered what the Vietnamese monk, Thich Nhat Hanh, said. I said, but work is life, and life is work. There's perfect balance. Anyhow, I don't know whether she accepted it, but I felt it was cryptic. And I said, maybe she deserved a little more explanation. But I didn't have an explanation. So then I did some introspection. There, I discovered on the net I was trying to read, I discovered a term called word semantics. I learned that word semantics is the study of words and sentences, and that they, words and sentences to which you give definitive meanings, affect your mind. It says that words and sentences affect your perception of reality by highlighting certain aspects and by hiding others. Words and sentences affect your emotions and thoughts depending on whether they are positive in connotation or negative in connotation. Words and phrases enable or manipulate you, appealing to your values, beliefs and desires. Words and sentences enable or constrain you from problem solving. Now let's take the first one. All our lives we have had this balance. Life, work, life, say balance the both. What it seems to highlight is that work and life are adversaries. You got to balance both of them. What it hides is the fact that inside the box called life, there are parents, there is wife, there are children, there is community, there is faith, there is personal time, each one of which is a very distinct entity. There's no way you can balance both of them. Your whole perception of work and life changes because of the meaning you have given to the term in your head. Now, supposing, next we come to emotions. How does it do it? Supposing I were to say, I love you. It immediately evokes emotions and thoughts of happiness, of affection. Say, I hate you. What happens? It evokes emotions and thoughts of anger, fear, distaste. Now, when you take work-life balance, you already have a thought process which goes on saying that they're adversaries. You've got to balance both of them. Then that negativity continues, and you start saying, why should I work so much? I also need a life. Then you come down. Next. The work-life balance, the image which we have about work-life balance seems to suggest that work is dull and dreary. Life is so much more fun. Look at all those white beaches, blue sands, lush green mountains. We need to lead life. Finally, we come to problem solving. Once I have a picture of a pair of scales with two boxes, 
my mind doesn't go out of that to try and say, how do I sort this out? The whole issue of problem solving disappears. Now, so let me just divert. Work is necessary. Work generates money. Money is necessary for a meaningful life. When I take my money and apply it to various aspects of my life, like my wife, children, society, faith, leisure, vacation, it makes my life meaningful, it makes me happy, it makes my family happy, there is fulfillment. Now, what we are trying to do is that we are treating work and life as adversaries, as in conflict with each other. No. Work and life are complementary to each other. Work and life are complementary in the sense they fit together in such a way as to promote happiness, fulfillment, contentment, and whatever. There can be no life-work balance. What we need to do is important. We, it all starts with our minds. We need first to replace the word work-life balance. Replace it. Replace it with work-life harmony or any other term which resonates with any one of you personally. Replace the image of work-life balance of a scale with two boxes, which say two soft clouds merging together and moving ahead. That is what life, work, and work is. They are not adversaries. They are mutually complementary. Now, sometimes I wonder, why is it that uh, we still continue to use the word work-life balance? Remember, it's a very catchy phrase. And many, many, many people in the world think there are millions of dollars of business opportunities in that term. Once you change it to work-life harmony or something else, replace scales, your life becomes different. You have a new perspective of life. You have new emotions. You have new behavior. And there is a complete transformation in your life. Why I'm saying this and I like, I'm doing it at a law college, is that the youngsters here, some in the next few months, some next year, will come out and become lawyers. They have to deal with this problem from day one. There is no time to get used to it. It's better you start thinking differently. Maybe it will help. So ladies and gentlemen, life-work balance is a pipe dream. Don't chase it. Thank you.